Moving on now to the U.S. stock index futures ticked higher ahead of Wednesday's open as markets reacted to Donald Trump's decision to pull out of the nuclear deal with Iran. Around 5.30 a.m. Eastern Time, Dow futures rose 128 points, indicating a higher open of 131 points. The Nasdaq and the S&P 500 futures indicated a relatively positive start to the session for their respective markets. The move in pre-market trade came as global markets remain jittery following news that the U.S. will be exiting the 2015 nuclear accord with Iran. Looking at the data coming in, mortgage applications are due out at 7 a.m. Eastern Time, followed by producer price index at um, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time and whole tr wholesale trade fee figures at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Looking to the Federal Reserve, Atlanta Fed President Rafael Bostic is expected to be in Jacksonville in Florida to attend the World Affairs Council luncheon. And in Asia, stocks closed slightly lower today following President Donald Trump's announcement that the U.S. would pull out of the Iran nuclear deal as oil prices rose to multi-year highs. Japan's Nikkei 225 declined 0.44% as most sectors traded in negative territory, although gains were seen in mining and banking sectors. Elsewhere, South Korea's benchmark Kospi edged down by 0.24%. Despite the benchmark's overall decline, gains were still seen in petroleum refiners. Greater China markets uh, uh, searched for direction. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index tacked on 0.2% after hovering around the flat line earlier in the day. Mainland markets finished the day slightly lower. The Shanghai Composite slipped 0.08% and the Shenzhen Composite eased by 0.09%. In Australia, the ASS 200 tacked on 0.26% as the decline in the heavily weighted financial sub-index were offset by gains seen in most other sectors. And back here in Africa, MTN Group says U.S. President Donald Trump's decision to pull out of the Iran nuclear accord may limit the South African telecoms firm's ability to repatriate cash from MTN Iran cell. In 2018, the company had repatriated about 88 million euros from MTN Iran cell, including 61 million euros relating to the 2017 dividend due to MTN, as well as a further 27 million euros of historic dividends. The remaining balance due to MTN is about 200 million euros. MTN maintains its commitment to its investment in Iran cell and to repatriating the balance of legal cash. The company said it will continue to monitor the situation, including the response of the Iranian authorities and the other members of the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. And the International Monetary Fund has warned that sub-Saharan African nations are risking debt distress due to heavy borrowing and wide deficits despite overall economic growth. The sober assessment comes as African countries continue to tap international debt markets and issue record levels of debt in foreign currencies spurred on by insatiable investor demand for yields. In its economic outlook for the region released in Accra, Ghana, the fund projected the rate of economic expansion would rise to 3.4% this year, and that's up from 2.8% in 2017, boosted by global growth and higher commodity prices. Slower growth in South Africa and Nigeria, the continent's two largest economies, weighed on the region-wide average. What we're concerned about is really the pace of increase rather than the level of debt on average. But what is worrisome is that in uh, countries, particularly uh, oil exporters, other natural commodity exporters, what we've seen is a, uh, a pronounced increase in debt in the last couple of years. And there, of course, it reflects um, the big hit to their economies following the commodity price crash, the hit to revenue levels, the hits to uh, uh, the, their economies. Meanwhile, around 40% of low-income countries in the region are now in debt distress or at high risk of it, and refinancing the debt could soon become more costly. In much the rest of the region, uh, the increase has been more modest, but still, you know, it's on an increasing trend. And it, it reflects in most cases basically countries being uh, very aggressive in trying to address their uh, 
development objectives, you know, investment in infrastructure, in health, in education. Um, so what we're calling for right now is, you know, in those countries where debt has been gone up very aggressively, um, there there's going to be need for significant fiscal consolidation. Uh, and in the other countries where the level of debt has been increasing more modestly, there it's about trying to find the right balance between investment and avoiding debt sustainability issues. African governments issued a record $7.5 billion in sovereign bonds last year, 10 times more than in 2016. And they have issued or plan to issue over $11 billion in additional debt in the first half of 2018 alone. Six countries, Chad, Eritrea, Mozambique, Congo Republic, South Sudan and Zimbabwe, were judged to be in debt distress at the end of last year. Look, fundamentally, uh, over the medium term, huh, uh, what you want to do is uh, make sure that the lion's share of your financing objective is addressed through revenue mobilization. And that indeed is, you know, a lot of the work that we do with countries, how to be able to generate between half and one percentage point of GDP a year increase in revenues. So that is really ultimately how you want to be able to finance uh, your development spending needs. However, you know, uh, temporarily, of course, you know, financing, uh, borrowing to finance, uh, to, you know, spending is uh, part of the macroeconomic policy toolkit which all countries use. And within reason, that is also uh, an appropriate objective. The IMF considered that Africa's enormous needs will continue to demand heavy investments to build infrastructure and social development. But to do so, while avoiding the risk of a debt trap, the continent, which currently has the lowest revenue to GDP ratio in the world, will need to become more self-reliant. When we return after the break, the AFDB president speaks on the Africa Investment Forum launched in South Africa on Tuesday. Do stay with us. <laughs> 